Hi there, and welcome to your Pick a Card Tarot Readings for Libra Season. First, I just want to acknowledge that we have a new backdrop. This is actually going to be my home for the next 12 months, or maybe more, fingers crossed. I relocated to Chengdu, Bali as of last week, and within two days of arriving, I got this villa. So it really feels like I manifested this. Everything feels so surreal, but also so aligned at the moment. This marks a big brand new chapter for me and I'm just so motivated to get back in control of my health, my creative energy, so I don't feel so burnt out all the time. And so I'm on a health kick. I joined a gym recently. I'm getting a friend to train me. I'm taking mobility classes. And I've also been taking care of, which has been such a help. And care of is actually today's sponsor. So thank you so much, care of, for supporting this channel. I'm taking Kara's vitamin packs, their protein powder for the gains, their sleep blend so I can sleep more on time and regulate my circadian rhythm. I'm also taking their gut check for whenever I have the bali belly. <laughs> and I'm also trying out their super berry blend. My favorite thing about Care Of is how it evolves with you. You can retake their quiz as often as your goals and needs change so that all the vitamins and supplements you're taking are actually supporting you in exactly what you need within that phase of your life. And that's how I feel about the vitamin packs I'm currently taking. I currently have rhodiola, keratin, probiotics, and apple extract, which is actually new to care of, and it's a supplement that I cannot live without. I've been taking it for years now. It helps to support your metabolism, maintain muscle mass and tone, and fun fact, these are actually sourced from Kazakhstan, which is where apples originally came from. And another fun fact, the city Almaty, which is the biggest city in Kazakhstan, is named after apples. Alma means apple in our language, so now you know. Thought I could give a little shout out to where I'm from. Take care of quiz to see what vitamins and supplements they recommend for you. Click on the link below and use my link at ESMR50 to get 50% off of your first order. Thanks so much, Kara, and thank you for listening. I definitely have a lot more to update you on, but that'll be it for now. Now let's get into the video. So if you're watching these readings at the time of upload, they will most likely apply to Libra season for you. But you can of course watch this at any time because energy is timeless and we're all on different timelines. If you clicked on this video and you're connecting with me right now, take that as a sign that there might be messages in this video for you and they might be relevant to your current situation. So we're going to get into a quick meditation before we look at the readings for you today. I'm going to ring the singing bowl three times and with each ring, take a deep breath in and a complete exhale out. Soften your gaze, create space between the eyebrows, 
Allow your cheeks to droop, parting the lips, and releasing your jaw. Arrive in this moment, deriving your body with every breath. Lower the shoulders and begin to drop your awareness down, down, down into the center of your chest. Into your heart space. Be sure to listen to your intuition from here today. Listen for what resonates emotionally. Listen for what helps you feel lighter and more calm and more at peace. Listen for what restores a sense of stillness in you. Listen for what feels right. Now when you're ready, can open your eyes and look at the three groups before you. For group one, we have Citrine Quartz and the Light Seer's deck. For group two, we have Rose Quartz and the Golden Universal Tarot deck. For group three, we have Black Obsidian and the Four Noble Tarot deck. I have been connected with Francis, the founder of Four Noble Healing, for a couple years now, and I'm really excited to be using her deck in this. She sent this over as a gift. Thank you, Francis, if you're watching this. So now I just invite you to soften your gaze and notice which deck stands out to you or which crystal stands out to you. And which group stands out to you as you hear it? Is it group one, group two, or group three? If you feel drawn to more than one group, you're welcome to listen to more than one reading. Once you've chosen your group, you can go down to the timestamps below to click on your reading, and I'll see you over there. If you chose group one, Citrine Chords, or the Light Seer's deck, then this is your reading. Hi, group one. We're going to get started with your current energies. For that, I'll be pulling a couple cards from the Light Seer's deck. So what do we need to know about Group 1's situation? Group 1, what do we need to know about
the group one's situation. Hmm. Also get some oracle cards from Marcel's oracle deck. Okay. So we have censorship, leaving, and angel. We also have seven of swords, four of pentacles, and six of wands. Hmm. So I want to begin with the seven of swords and censorship. I've never gotten these two cards together in the same reading, and they're really standing out to me right now. Normally, I talk about the Seven of Swords as trickery, as scheming, and trying to find an easy way out when there isn't any. And so, in that sense, it's like trying to cheat the universe, trying to cheat your destined path. And other readers, especially within love readings, will read this as cheating on your partner, cheating on a connection. And I don't say this very lightly, but I feel like I'm like getting that energy right now with censorship as well. At the very least, it's somebody being dishonest with someone. So within a connection, rather, whether that's platonic or romantic, somebody is censoring themselves and what they know or what they did, someone is not being fully transparent or honest. So this could be a friend who's hiding something from you or a romantic partner who's hiding something from you. This could also be you hiding something from them. Either way, there is dishonesty here. There is a lack of transparency. And I also want to say that whoever is doing this is doing so because they think this is the best course of action. We get into the Seven of Swords energy because we really believe in our egos when it is scheming and trying to find an easy way out. We really believe that that is the best thing we can do with what we got. Um, so whoever is doing this act of dishonesty is doing so because they think it is best for the situation, it is best for the connection, and they can't really think of any other option at the moment. So I think that's important to keep in mind so that we're not demonizing a person. Um, I do want to say, because this doesn't look too, this energy doesn't seem too heavy or dark. I just get the sense that someone's hiding something. Someone's not being fully honest. So that's that. That's it. I don't think it's um, from malicious intent. And it could be about the fact that you're achieving a lot of success and recognition right now. Or so they perceive and there's some envy here about the fact that you're in the spotlight and they can't shine in the spotlight with you. This could also be the other way around. It could be the fact that you are envious of somebody in your life who you perceive is in a very successful phase of their life and you know, you're envious because you can't seem to um, get that yourself. All of this seems very divinely guided. We have the angel. All of this is divinely protected. So if it is you who's achieving the success and recognition and you have this inkling that people, there are people in your life who aren't very happy for you or who are trying to take from your success, the angel card spirit is letting us know that the evil eye cannot be cast on you right now. You are divinely protected. They are protecting you. Wow. Just look at the amount of eyes in this image. There are 
five and there's another one over here six there are six eyes so you are protected the evil eye cannot get to you and i think that's really important for you to know if you want further protection you might want to think about you might want to get yourself like an evil eye pendant or necklace that could be helpful as well at this time there's something really important about drawing back your energy pulling back your energy calling back your power and cutting cords leaving this connection maybe letting something go walking away and being very protective of what you own so really taking ownership of everything that is yours your material things your home your resources your money your career this is a time for you to be very protective of all of that and not to give away things frivolously or to lend people things. You want to call back all of your power by holding on to your coin purse. So especially if someone is wanting to, um, is asking for a loan and you're considering lending them money, this is message that this is not a good time to be doing that right now and i think we're also in mercury retrograde so do not make any negotiations or contracts in that sense hold on to your money hold on to your coin purse hold on to everything that you have ownership over in order to protect your power because i think there is a leakage somewhere and you need to cut that cord pull back your power and this could potentially mean leaving a connection so if it's with this person that isn't fully honest with you or you're not fully honest with them or there's just something murk murky over here you might have to call back your power and walk away this is very interesting <laughs> now what else do we need to know about group one situation what else do we need to know about group ones? It's a lot of cards. Let's get to these two. We have five of pentacles and knight of swords. Can I get clarification on this? Hmm. So, Spear is asking you to be mindful. If you are too quick with your words, too quick with your actions, if you speak before you think, you might run the risk of acting from a place of lack, a place of poverty, or a disempowered state. And that's where people can take advantage of you. People can perceive you wrongly or they can have their way with you. So make sure that you are slow and very mindful with presence when you deal with others so that you're not coming from the Five of Pentacles energy. This is the energy of poverty, of lack, of feeling unworthy, feeling not good enough, feeling like you're not deserving, like you don't know any better. And what I'm seeing here is you no, <laughs> you are abundant, you have your resources, you are successful, you're doing really well for yourself and many people look up to you for the success that you have already achieved. You know what you're doing. You know very well what you're doing. So don't fool yourself into acting from a place of disempowerment this is your old self and you're done with this do not let others make you feel like you exist in this space you don't anymore you're no longer in the five of pentacles energy you figure this out you're abundant now you you are worthy do not make other people feel like you're unworthy and that they're allowed to take your power you've you're over this okay <laughs> let's get that straight you're over the five pentacles energy this is done 
this is not you anymore. You're not Five of Pentacles anymore. So think before you speak. Be very mindful when you speak. Be very mindful with your actions. Be slow. Allow yourself to rest. Take your time to be in meditation and contemplation so that every action that is coming from you is empowered and full of presence. What else does group one need to hear? Dance with life. Do something to change your energy. Because I've been talking about calling back your power so much, I want to invite you to do some sort of cord cutting ritual. You can go to my cord cutting videos if you like. I have a couple of them on this channel, so you can use that. Um, they always work wonders for me when I intentionally decide that I am no longer connected with this person energetically. It does something to you in which you feel like a burst of energy. So try that out if that resonates, if that, you know, intrigues you. Dance as well. Shaking can be really helpful. I believe this is a call for you to get back into your energy, like this, like being centered in your life force. Because I feel like you've been pretty drained for a while now because you've unknowingly been, been giving your energy to people and it's time to call all that back and just feel like a surge of life force in your body. Um, and I think in feeling that, you're really going to know just how worthy you are and just how great you've been doing. Let's get a monology card. How nice. You and your loved ones are safe. New moon in Cancer. So you are under the protection of angels. You have the evil eye protection. You are divinely protected and safe. No one can get to you right now. And your angels and spirit guides and past loved ones are really urging you to see that for yourself, that you're on this divinely guided path and you have to really believe in it and not let anybody get in your way. Do not sell yourself short. Okay, what else do we need to hear? What can we expect in the near future for group one? God, wow, this is amazing. So, okay, clarify the Knight of Pentacles, please. Okay. So, we have first the Ten of Pentacles along with the Lovers. This is so beautiful. This is so beautiful. This is ultimate abundance, ultimate purpose, fulfillment, wish fulfillment in all the ways possible. If this reading has been about a romantic connection, this could be you coming into an even more beautiful and fulfilling connection or relationship once you are over this, once you leave this this connection behind that isn't right for you because we did talk about leaving at the beginning right so if this is about love you might have to leave this current person behind in order to work towards the ultimate relationship that you are destined for this is somebody who is your life partner in every sense of the word. Someone you can collaborate with in life creatively, who can help you realize really big things and actualize your biggest vision for life. 
the Ten of Pentacles tells us you're going to be in a very solid connection that will withstand the test of time, that will build a legacy. You will have a family, a home, and many generations with this life partner. For others who um, this reading was not about love, or maybe it was about someone platonic, I see this as even more material success because you're calling back your power and you're realizing just how worthy you are and just how much you are deserving and you know you're no longer call, um, selling yourself short you are really standing in your power because of this you're gonna do you're gonna really get into a, a phase of buckling down with work that's going to invite in more riches, more opportunities, more money. With work, you're going to be able to step through this portal where you're going to experience just like a leveling up of doing more than you thought you were capable of, achieving more success than you thought you were capable of, and I feel like you were already in the nine of pentacles energy, but because of this extra pentacle, this final leveling up, you're going to get into the ten of pentacles energy of building legacy, maybe investing in homes, real estate, investing in other investments, <laughs> and just really building a legacy for your family, for your children and future generations you're going to be that person that everybody looks to as the model of success with the lovers you're really going to be living your highest timeline we know that the success that is incoming is going to be a reflection of just how aligned you are to your purpose, your dharma, and what you came here to accomplish. This is not um, distorted success built on the ego, built on pushing, forcing, and straining. This is divinely guided success because you are so much so true to who you really are in this lifetime and what existence is wanting from you in this lifetime that's why we have the lovers here so this is the ultimate success the highest timeline possible oh and one side message for some of you you might meet a future business partner soon someone that you can collaborate with who shares the same values, who can help you achieve your vision if this reading has been work-related for you or more platonic than romantic. Okay, I'm just going to pull one more card before we go. Oh, oh, okay, we have emotions are running high so you know what more than that what's really standing out to me is the super moon and just how big that is like like actualizing something that is massive you know that's what's really standing out to me in this image and along with the bottom deck energy that is full moon in aquarius another full moon show the world the real you so what I'm seeing here are two full moons being illuminated, completely lit up, bright in the sky. One of them is even a super moon that just appears, you know, larger than life. And I feel like that's the message here is that you have to really choose to stay in the spotlight and, and just, you know, like ravel in it. This is where you're meant to be. You are meant to be a star. You're meant to shine. You're meant to be successful and accomplished. And you deserve all the recognition that you're getting. Do not let anybody convince you otherwise. Do not sell yourself short. Know what you're about. Know what you know. Like, believe in what you know. Believe in the fact that 
you already know so much and you've already accomplished so much. Really believe in yourself and the fact that you're deserving of all the goodness that's already in your life and the rest that's incoming. Okay, group one, thank you so much for being here. I hope that you found this reading helpful. Let me know in the comments below. And if you like more readings from me, you can check me out on Patreon. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next reading or the next video. Thanks so much for being here. Sending love, light, and healing. If you chose group two, rose quartz, or the Golden Universal Tarot deck, then this is your reading, group two. So group two, what do we need to know about your current situation? We have the death card. That's the first card to come out. What else do we need to know for group two? Okay, we have the Eight of Cups. That actually came out earlier along with a bunch of other cards. So I put it back, but now it's out again. So it definitely wants to be here. Can we also get some oracle cards? Hmm. So there's definitely a message here about death because we have death as well as decay. We also have the Eight of Cups, so there's a huge message here about leaving something behind, letting something die and decay, letting something wither away, and clearing space for a rebirth, for something completely new. In the Eight of Cups, you are walking away from what no longer serves you. This is choosing to let go of what you've previously become very attached to, letting go of things that you are very comfortable with for the simple reason that you know there must be more to life. So this energy is never easy. When we get this card, it's like we almost want to cling to the Eight of Cups, but we choose to walk away, and in walking away, we're telling ourselves, don't look back, don't look back, just keep walking. It's that kind of feeling. You almost want to look back and retrace your steps and, you know, like convince yourself that you can keep these cups, but deep down intuitively, you know when you're in this energy that you cannot look back you have to let it go because that's the only way for you to experience more in life. There's something that is dying that's really coming to an end. It's overstayed its welcome. It's dried up and you have to clear the space that it's been taking up. This can be an old self, an old version of self that you no longer want to be affiliated with anymore. You don't want to add from this place anymore. You're acknowledging that perhaps you have held on because it's comfortable to approach life from the space of your old self. It's predictable, but now you're almost realizing that if I don't let this part of me go, I might never leave. I might never grow beyond this. I might actually just kind of keep myself stuck in this comfort zone forever. I might harden up to the point where there's no, there's no expansion, you know? So you're realizing that perhaps it's not good to stay too comfortable. If you stay too comfortable, you might harden into that shape and 
risks risk the potential of never expanding ever again. So it's kind of like um, you're giving yourself an ultimatum. That's kind of what I'm seeing. And I'm talking about like hardening into a shape because we have tough shell here. So I know this image has a crab, but I'm actually thinking of a selfish shellfish right now and how they am i i think it's shellfish that they they leave their shell when they've outgrown it right and i feel like that's what i'm getting for you it's like you know that you've outgrown things people and places and it's time for you to walk away from these attachments and search for a bigger shell to house your expansion. I also feel like this might be feeling quite complicated for you right now. Like it's hard to leave behind these attachments. It's hard to leave behind connections and relationships that have meant so much to you for so long. It's hard to have a clean break is what I'm getting from this card. But you also intuitively know deep down that this rebirth has to happen. You're hearing the angels, you're hearing your calling, and it is so loud and vivid and obvious at this point that you have to take this leap of faith. You have to answer the call. You can't ignore it anymore. Your intuition is so loud. You could be having vivid dreams right now. Maybe you're experiencing psychosomatic symptoms, somatic pains here and there, or just like really loud thoughts and images and symbols are coming to you at this time your subconscious is really speaking to you and it's really loud at this time to just to really make sure that you're hearing your intuition and your spirit guides and your angels and what they want for you so answer the call literally ang answer the angel that's in this image get out of your grave have your metamorphosis your transformation your rebirth come out naked come out purified clear cleansed it's time for a rebirth okay what else do you need to hear Oh my god, <laughs> I'm getting the chills. <sighs> you have warrior woman, have you answered your deepest calling? I have to take a deep breath because I'm shooketh. Wow. Oh my god. Birthing a new age. Birthing new creations, dreaming a new world into being. So if you are listening to this right now, you might have gotten, I believe it was group one in my last year reading video that got this card. So you might remember seeing this card in my last video and this could be a continuation of that message from the previous reading. You're dreaming a new world into being. Whatever you're leaving behind is welcoming a completely different space that can house you. That space includes people and things that are conducive to your growth and your greatest expansion. You're dreaming a new world into being. This is a new age for you and for all the people that you will impact. Let's get a Moonology card. Okay. 
So you have two full moons. You have a full moon in Leo and a full moon eclipse. So if you are wanting like a time prediction, the next full moon can be really important for you. So keep an eye out for the next full moon. Something important might happen around then. Conclusions are within reach, so I think you're going to make some very important decisions very soon in regards to what you're walking away from, what you're letting die in your life, in yourself. You're going to make some really important decisions soon that will be conclusive, that will put an end to this chapter of your life and open doors for the next chapter. With Full Moon and Leo, Rather than pride getting your way, what I'm getting is this card is inviting you to really show up as the person you came here to be, to really take full ownership of what you came here to do and show up, St uh, stand in the spotlight, show up. Allow yourself to shine, allow yourself to be seen, and allow all of that to come from a heart-centered place. And that is the wisdom of Leo. So you might want to look into what the Leo archetype represents and learn to embody it more as you step into this new chapter. Okay, now let's get some more tarot cards additional advice or maybe future energies what does spirit want you to know group two group two group two group two this is interesting and i have a feeling some of you are not going to like hearing this you're going to almost feel like you will be going through a period of inactivity. The only thing is, this isn't exactly you being inactive. Everything is happening. Everything is under motion, in motion. <laughs> but it's just that you, your egoic self, is not going to be doing too much. And so... From the outside, it's going to look like you are just sitting idle and hanging around. <laughs> um, but the truth is, everything is happening for you. You're just, you know, being divinely guided and led. You're not the one rowing the boat. You're going to be the one sitting in the boat as spirit, as the universe takes you to calmer shores where your new beginning can happen. So... The hangman represents a lesson here. You're going to feel the itch to take action impulsively or from compulsion, from habit. You're going to feel that itch every now and then, like, oh, nothing's happening. I'm not doing anything. I need to make something happen. Don't listen to that voice. Don't act from a place of anxiety or a lack of trust sit with that feeling get uncomfortable hang yourself upside down and learn the lesson of just staying idle until it is time to respond and this is a huge message this is a really big spiritual lesson that you are going to learn very soon and I'm sure that once you've mastered this lesson of the hangman, things are going to move along really quickly for you. That's right. It's going to teach you to be more in your feminine. It's going to teach you flow and how creativity works, how a creation is manifested into being. It doesn't come from forcing, it comes from flow, from being fluid and in alignment with all the elements of the universe. So this lesson of the hanged man is going to teach you what it means to be a feminine, creative being. And um, 
and is going to teach you to trust in your abundance as well. That's also a very feminine thing, to trust that you are always provided for, that you are never forgotten, and the universe is always convening in your favor. Wow. This reading is intense and so beautiful. I really do not think we would um, go this deep. <laughs> I'm just going to end with one final message. <laughs> there we go. So speaking of believing in your abundance and developing trust in the universe, we have have faith in your dreams. Waxing crescent moon. So sit in your sovereignty. Learn what it means to be in flow. Learn what it means to actually manifest. Manifest in the truest sense of the word, not to force things into being, but to, uh, you know, allow things, like allow the unseen to become seen, because that's what. The word manifest means it is what already exists but that is not yet seen that is not yet physical right so this process of manifestation is simply just allowing the unseen to become seen allowing it to come into physical being and the lesson of the hangman is really going to teach you that and what that looks like and how that's going to feel um, and um, help you really familiarize yourself with the process of manifestation and flow and abundance and trust, universal trust. This is so beautiful. Thank you so much, Group 2. I hope that you found this reading helpful. Let me know in the comments below. And if you like more readings from me, join me on Patreon. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next reading or the next video. I'm sending you so much love, healing, and light. If you chose Group 3, Black Obsidian, or the Four Noble Tarot deck, then this is your reading. Hi, group three. I'm really excited for this reading because I'll be using this deck for the first time with you guys. Let's get some cards for your current energies. I'm also going to pull some Marcel's Oracle cards. What do we need to know about group three, Black Obsidian? What do we need to know about group three? So you might be coming into some sort of celebration over the next new moon or full moon. We have the moon card and the four of wands. And this celebration is going to mark the, um, like something coming into fruition that has been in the works for a long time. When I talk about the Four of Wands, I always say that it's, the wands represent creative energy. And creative energy can be solidified into some sort of structure, at which point it can be celebrated, like a romantic connection, you know, when that energy between two people is um, cultivated enough, it becomes solid enough to be celebrated as a relationship at an engagement party or a wedding. So it's something like that where you've been cultivating this energy for a while and it's going to solidify to the point where you can celebrate it and it might happen over the next moon the next new moon or full moon. This can be a housewarming party, an engagement, graduation party, a bridal shower, baby shower, any of that sort. 
or just any good old party where you're coming together with your friends and you're just celebrating life can just be that too. Oh, we have quite a lot of cards here. I'm going to put that back actually. And keep shuffling since this is a new deck. Hmm. Eight of Swords. Okay. Tell us more about the Eight of Swords, please. Okay. Ooh. So, from Marcel's Oracle deck, we have Freedom and Leap of Faith. We also have the Sun card and Eight of Swords. It's really nice to see the Sun and the Moon together because this is the Yang and Yin or Masculine Feminine balancing each other out. This means your inner reality is coming into balance, it's harmonizing. So essentially, the message is, you don't have a lot to worry about, that's what I want to say. Your energies are in balance, things are in harmony, there's peace. However, at the mind level, you do have some limiting beliefs or mental constructs holding you back slightly. I feel like there is something, there's some sort of mental construct that has been your comfort zone that has kept you safe in the sense that you became familiar with this comfort zone and so when you were there you're comfortable, you're, you don't have to think too much, you can just, you know, exist by default. and. You've gotten really used to this cage. And I believe with this upcoming celebration or social event, you are being asked to step out of this cage. You're being asked to expand your idea of self and what it means to connect with others and other energies around you and I think there's some fear associated with that because you've gotten so used to your self-limiting ways and these mental constructs that have kept you predictable and comfortable you also have the call, so people could be calling you messaging you, inviting you to go out as well their invitations around. There's a call for you to mix and mingle with other energies around you. And you almost feel like you have to take a leap of faith every time to answer these calls. It's like it takes a lot out of you to step out of the cage. Even the though the door is right there, you don't have to fight too much to get out. Like, I feel like you see through your mental constructs, but even then, it takes a lot out of you energetically to step out. It feels like a leap of faith every time. It feels, yeah, like it's, it's quite draining to, you know, convince yourself to step out of the house, <laughs> is what I want to say. Of course, that doesn't have to be literal, that can be metaphorical. There's some sort of mental construct that you can see beyond, but because it's so you're so used to it and it's comfortable and predictable, you'd rather stay there most of the time. And when you and, and the times when you do choose to go out, it takes up a lot of energy for you to take that step. Spirit wants to tell you that you're already doing it. 
stop overthinking, keep facing your true north. So you already see beyond your mental constructs and your self-limiting ways. You see beyond these behavioral patterns. You see beyond your comfort zone. You know where the door is. You know how to get out of the cage because the door is wide open. You're already doing it. You've done it many times also. Stop overthinking it. Just keep facing your true north. You've been doing it and you can keep doing it until it becomes your new default. So I feel like for some of you, this can be social anxiety. Like you've gotten so used to being on your own that when it comes to interacting with other people, it takes a lot of energy out of you to put yourself out there like that. And the thing with social anxiety, if like we're talking, you know, lower tier social anxiety, not huge social anxiety brought on by PTSD, but if we're talking about lower tier social anxiety, it takes a fair amount of exposure to get over, right? It, you can't get over it by being on your own. It's really finding predictability and confidence in dealing with other people. So you really have to just expose yourself to it over and over again until that becomes your default, until you can feel like there's predictability in those scenarios of interacting with people. So I feel like for some of you, it could be that. That's what I'm seeing with freedom and the Eight of Swords. Let's get some more cards. Council of Light, Divine Orchestration, Helpers in the Subtle Realms. So I also feel like the people that have been calling you, reaching out to you, wanting to connect with you are carrying energy that is good for you, that would be of positive influence for you. So the people that you are connecting with, the energies that are surrounding you have been divinely orchestrated to surround you for your own good. So spirit is urging you to connect with what's around you in order to continue expanding. What you need to expand is in your external reality. If you do not look outward, you might create stagnancy inward your external reality is a mirror to your internal reality, right? Nothing's happening out here. Things will stop happening in here. <laughs> and um, yeah, so that's, that's an interesting message, but it is definitely coming through. Spirit wants you to keep things moving, keep things in flow. Do not stagnate. Let's get some more tarot cards. What else does group three need to know? Ooh. We have the hanged man and the tower. Interesting combination. So the tower is something falling apart, deconstructing. The hanged man is staying idle, staying still, unmoving, and I feel like it's the hanged man that's going to be deconstructed in your case because I feel like you've been here for a while. You've remained stuck willingly because it's comfortable. And in this energy, not much is happening. And you, I feel like you've already learned this spiritual lesson. Like you're really good at this. And so it's time to move on, to move forward and learn other lessons. You know, this is a lesson you've already mastered. You're good at staying idle and waiting things out and responding to situations instead of acting from a place of compulsion. Now, 
allow yourself to unravel, break down this pattern, let the tower moment happen for you to break down this rigidity so that you can be fluid again and move about life more freely. Let go of the rigidity. You are already facing your true north. Now all you need to do is be less rigid so that you can spring forward. There's a lot of balance in your energy with the sun and moon card together. This is a big deal because they're both major arcana and it's rare that we get both of these together. Your yin and yang are balanced. You're in a good place. You're harmonized. Now all you need to do is be less rigid, be a little more malleable so that spirit can propel you forward into experiencing more of what you need to experience on this path of yours. Let's get one more work your light card. Starseed, what lights you up? So perhaps what's going to get you out of your cage What's going to get you out of the door and taking leaps of faith is if you focus on what excites you, what lights you up, what actually wants you, motivates you, inspires you to step out of your door. Do not take action from a place of obligation. Do it because you are inspired, you are excited, you there is energy propelling you to take forward action. So take a leap of faith only if you are inspired, only if it feels right to do so, if you are lit up in the idea of doing it. So focus on what lights you up. Genuinely answer that question. What lights you up? What's going to get you out of your rigidity? Let's get a moonology card now. Mm, to echo the you're already doing a card to stop overthinking. You are good enough, full moon in Virgo. You are good enough, stop overthinking. You have got it all. You are doing so well. You are good enough. There's no need to overthink it. There's no need to hide. There's no need to stay stuck. You are good enough. You are, in fact, overprepared even for what you sometimes overthink about. You are good enough. Now let's get some more tarot cards, perhaps future energies. What does group three need to know about the near future? Okay, you can clarify. Oh, nice. Okay, so there's some additional advice. You have the Two of Swords and Seven of Wands. So, one thing that I guess you must be realistic about is the fact that it's often hard to read people or, or maybe it's easy actually it's easy to read people and I think especially for you I think you're very empathic you're very self-aware and it's easy for you to read people and the thing is most people would much rather remain hidden they do not 
want you to see what's going on on the inside and so I think in some circumstances you might find yourself in the two of swords energy where it's like you think you know what's going on with this person and you have it figured out but it's almost like they want to hide it they don't want you to know the full story and I know that sometimes that can feel strange for you because you're wanting to connect but certain people are are not willing to reveal all of who they are in order for that connection to happen and you just have to make do with that you have to be at peace with whatever they are comfortable with in connecting with you so it's like how she has her arms crossed and she's you know hiding her heart space seven of wands is the same where people can be defensive and protective of their egos it's hard for people to trust each other and being someone who's so empathic i know that that can get to you at times but i assure you that none of this is personal you have to simply accept that not everyone is as surrendered and comfortable as you in revealing who they really are that doesn't mean they do not want to connect with you but they might just not have the capacity to connect with you so deeply so do not let it get to you don't take it personally have a certain level of discernment and compassion for these people who you know, are, are trying their best to connect with you, but they just cannot connect with you on that level that you are capable of. So that's, that's something that Spirit wants to make known to you so that you can be more lenient with the people around you and you don't have to take things personally. We also have Six of Pentacles and Ten of Cups. This is so beautiful. And what I'm hearing is you bring a lot of joy to the people you connect with because I think you are such an empathic and heart-centered being. You are a great active listener. You ask really intriguing questions and people enjoy being around you. People feel enriched by your presence and when you shower them with your focused presence and with your focused attention, and so knowing that give as much as you're capable of giving i think that's going to bring you a lot of fulfillment as well and know that you are in your power when you're giving you're not losing anything in sharing your heart-centered compassion with people that will enrich you as well as much as they will be enriched in receiving it and this will create many opportunities for you and other people that you connect with to feel a lot of joy, a lot of love, a lot of fulfillment, emotionally speaking. So this is just really beautiful energy. Um, people will be drawn to you. People will want to talk to you and connect with you and get to know you more because you just have this presence about you that they can tell you've cultivated which not many people have so you're a really special person and um, know that you have a lot to offer in your connections and relationships and know that you also have a lot to gain in sharing your compassion with the people around you this is so beautiful wow now I want to get one final card for you. Wow. You have Sisterhood of the Rose, Beauty and Devotion, Priestess, Mystic, Teacher. So I feel like in getting out of your shell and taking leaves of faith to connect with people, you're going to be building a sisterhood. So you might identify as a feminine being you might be building a sisterhood if you don't identify as being feminine you could be connecting more with 
feminine people in your life, with feminine energy in your life. This is so beautiful. So I think many people will begin to see you as a mystic, as a high priestess, as someone they can learn from, as a teacher. You're going to find that you'll be a lot more able to step forward from a place of sovereignty and authority moving forward. People will respect you for what you know, for your wisdom, for your sage-like qualities. That's really beautiful. And that is your reading, group three. I hope that you found this helpful. Let me know in the comments below. And if you would like more readings from me, feel free to join me on Patreon. I will see you in one of the other readings now or maybe in the next video. Thanks so much for being here. I'm sending you so much love, light, and healing. And I'll talk to you very soon. Take care.